Hello and welcome to Chatify. Today we'll be analyzing three new individuals who purchased my facial analysis, looks maxing suggestions, and chatification service off my website, chatify.me. This is a private service by default, meaning if you purchase it, you're not going to automatically end up on a video. So I would like to take a second to thank these three individuals for allowing me to showcase the results here and to support the channel Chatify. The purpose of Chatify is to help others, I mean to neither disrespect nor put anyone down with this video. And of course, please seek professional advice before undergoing any treatment. This is only my well-researched and documented opinion. I will be employing a mathematical rating criterion that I developed which analyzes over a hundred facial features. This has increased considerably since 2022. Face number one, guys, he's 25 years old, 126 pounds at 5 foot 7. He's pretty light for his given height. Here's an angle shot, a smiling shot, and a side view. Please note that I am editing out the background of these photos, such as this one, since artifacts, blurriness, and all sorts of weird other things that are distracting for the video affect viewer retention in a negative way. Having a white or beige background is most optimal. Face number one's a great example of the synod phenotype of East Asia. Why do I care about this? Well, because because everybody is from different areas of the planet. We need to analyze them against the chatified version of their specific phenotype. In this case, the synod phenotype for face number one. Best features in order of importance. Face number one, let's get into it. Excellent low hairline. Although he doesn't have that much volume in his hair currently, we can see how low his hairline is situated, which is ideal. Secondly, he's extremely dark and thick eyebrows. For many synod people, this is a struggle. Not everybody has this. In his case, he hits it home. Thirdly, he is tight hyoid skin. So here's his cervical mental angle. It's 115.4 degrees. This is quite good. Anything under about 120, 125, it really ranges depending on the situation and the position of the head. But in his case, like 115 degrees, that isn't too far off from like a right angle. I could argue that it's maybe on the higher end of optimal, but it's still quite good. In terms of his submandibular contour angle, that's where he really shines. And that's the angle between the mandible here and the hyoid bone kind of region here. Anything below 20 degrees is quite optimal. Moving on, gonial angle, 116 degrees, incredible. Secondly, his mandibular plane angle is 16 degrees. That's below 20 degrees, very good. Some people say that 10 degrees is the most optimal, but anything really from 10 to about 22.5 can be quite good. And then finally, his ramus inclination angle is only 8 degrees. This is incredible. This is like really close to vertical, but not all the way to vertical where it looks weird. Fifthly, his jaw frontal angle of 87 degrees. The closer you can get to a 90 degree right angle, the better. And he's a lengthy ramus where the gonin undercuts his mouth. As we can see, his jaw is quite good so far. He's facially lean, which kind of ties back into the tight hyoid skin, and his phenotypic features align well. He is the synod phenotype genetically, and physically he resembles it quite closely. So he has low nasal projection going from the alar crease area to his pronasal is 0.5 in relation to his nasion to pronasal full nose length here. For people that are European descent, this is actually not good. But for him being the synod phenotype, this projection should be lower and it is lower, hence why it works for him. Additionally, he's a monolid eye shape, which just totally suits him. Having a double eyelid would not look as good for his given phenotype. Additionally, though not fully optimal, his longer filtrum does work. I'm sure some people will argue with me in the comments about this, but the truth is a 1.9 to 1 chin filtrum ratio for the synod phenotype is not nearly as bad as a 1.9 to 1 chin filtrum ratio for the stereotypical Chad. Think Celted phenotype, think Norded. That would not work for them. In his case, it would look a bit better if it was 2 or 2.2 to 1. However, being 1.9 to 1 is not a flaw. It's worth talking about this. And he is moderate eye eyebrow distance. This works for his specific phenotype. When you do purchase a facial analysis from me, we do take your phenotype into consideration. Meaning for someone of the Celted phenotype, it's going to be a lot different than for someone with the Synod phenotype. There's values for all of this, and this is all shown in your report. Facial flaws in order of importance. Face number one, let's get into it. 
First of all, he has a slightly thin neck. So from the front is 1.25 to one. What does that mean? This value, the bigonial width, is 1.25 times his neck width. Well, I would say his front does look out of proportion, not only because the bigonial width, but because we have to recognize the fact that he's a narrowing lower third to some degree, meaning that his bigonial width is already smaller than ideal. What this means is that actually, if you were to take this measurement of his neck width against his bizygomatic width right here, it would actually look a lot worse, meaning he does need to thicken his neck. And then from the side view, it's 0.55, like the neck width divided by his full kind of cranial depth. Face number one also has forward set eyes, although the Sinan phenotype has a little bit of leeway here. In his case, it simply is way too far forward. And he is a slightly rounded supra tip. The pronasal, like the tip of his nose, is too round. Ideally, you would want this angle lower than about 115 degrees. In his case, it just doesn't suit him. It's not sharp enough. He's a slightly thin mid face of 1.6 to 1, but not a huge flaw. And he has slight narrowing of his lower third, as we mentioned earlier. Additionally, he has oversized nostrils. And this could be connected to the fact that he has that super tip, which is simply too rounded. And that's it. So guess face number one's rating, everyone. We got our pretty boy blend masculinity scale here, which looks at all the different aspects of dimorphism. Boom. Six out of 10 from the blend perspective. I know for a fact that some people are going to say this guy's like a seven and some people are going to say he's like a five. This is all because you have to recognize that he is the synod phenotype. He is not a conventional Chad, so he's going to score a lot worse from those criteria. But from his phenotype perspective, he scores quite a bit higher. Looks maxing advice, face number one, let's get into it. First of all, mastic gum would greatly help his narrowing lower third and would add even more definition to his jaw. It really depends on your structure that you're working with. In face number one's case, he's a candidate where I know there'd be a large benefit from using this technique hairstyle. He has great natural hair genetics. If we can just increase his volume using volcanic dry ash, you know, some different products, investigating a perm, I simply think face number one will look so good. Thirdly, the gym. Thickening up his neck will have the biggest impact on his facial attractiveness from an objective manner. Doing anything more surgical outside of this natural realm is relatively optional for face number one simply because he's quite attractive to begin with. I mean, you'll see during his chatification what that could entail. So time to chatify face number one with infinite budget comes literally infinite possibilities. Let's take him up to the A plus level of attractiveness, which places him among the godlike models of this earth. Wow. So you're seeing his entire curve shifting to the right. He still doesn't score that great from the masculine perspective, but from the more pretty and blend and very pretty areas, he looks quite incredible. As we zoom in here, like look at the hair. It just gets so much thicker. Then I did an emo hair variation, a longer perm variation, looks amazing. And then just a shorter, perm, as well as straight bangs, which I don't know if they suit him, but it's worth noting that that's how it was done. The huge focus on the hair, the neck, and a tiny bit of a lip lift. Why? Because I told you, even though his chin filtration ratio is decent, it could be enhanced a little bit further. His eye eyebrow distance has shrunk slightly, but nothing that crazy. I probably could have done even more to his nose, but I did want to preserve his natural appearance to some degree. Here's a quick breakdown of what my website includes. My conventional package here includes a face rating out of 10, which comes with detailed analysis, looks maxing suggestions, and one chatified image, as well as a morph video showcasing the before and after transformation. All of this is done while taking your masculinity and phenotype into consideration. Also have add-ons, the first one being add more chatified images. This one is extremely common if people want a side profile shot chatified as well as maybe a smiling shot. Many people like to add more. Secondly, I got a quick delivery 24 hour service. And then finally, I have a full private video option. If you want like the craziest detail, this is it. Sometimes having an angle chatification done is the best of both worlds because you get to see both the front and the side. In his case, you're seeing that thicker hair, you know, that jaw structure widening out is much more apparent and his neck. And then we see some like different hairstyles. The perm is quite awesome. I love those waves at the back, the wings coming out. He's actually a very good looking guy naturally and has huge potential going forward. Face number two, guys, he's 24 years old, 230 pounds at 6'4". So he's a very big guy. And I think it's notable when looking at his face, like he has a big face. Here's a smiling shot and here is a side profile. Boom. 
Face number two is just a clear-cut example of the congolid phenotype. Best features in order of importance, face number two, let's get into it. Face number two has full lips. This works for his phenotype extremely well. He's a lengthy ramus where the gonian undercuts his mouth, and he's a forward-grown maxilla. And finally, he has straight white teeth, but this is slightly nuanced, as you will see in the next section. On to the flaws. Guess what I'm going to say right here extremely wide set eyes with an ES ratio of 0.55. This might be the highest that I've ever analyzed. He has a lot of sclera show and he has an extremely long philtrum of 1.35 to 1. Even though his phenotype allows for a little bit of a longer philtrum, this is simply way outside the optimal area. He has large earlobes. You can really see there. It almost looks like there's earrings on his ears and his eye orbitals simply lack compactness. Eye orbital vector is negative, meaning that the inferior orbital rim, inferior meaning the lowest portion of his orbital, is further behind his eye. Optimally, this should be forward, meaning that there's forward growth. Next thing I would like to dive into, his pagonian, which is like the furthest part of his chin, is simply so recessed in relation to his nasion. This is unoptimal. So these two things are a major flaw in his case. This isn't just related to his chin projection, but also related to how far his mandible goes. His ramus in relation to it is quite a bit longer than optimal. Additionally, he has a convex lip philtrum angle. Ideally, this would be an inverted, meaning concave arc, creating this modelly upper lip appearance. Like convex just does not look as attractive and gives almost a retruded upper lip appearance despite having decent projection in his case. Face number two also has wide set eyebrows, which is surprising considering the fact that he already has wide set eyes and he has a thin mid face of 1.3 to 1. This is way below the optimal area. Face number two is moderate eye eyebrow distance and he has a gummy smile. So although his teeth are very straight, this is a big issue. And then finally, Face number two has a massive birthmark. He simply looks older than he actually is. It almost looks like an age spot, which is not optimal. So guess face number two's rating, everyone. Boom. Four out of 10 peaking from the blend perspective. All right, so let's get into the looks maxing advice. There's a lot to go over here. First of all, beard maxing, like this is worth consideration. What I'm thinking of is just bringing it all out here. Next. Lower sclera work. You could, in theory, get like lower eyelid fillers. You could get hyaluronic acid injected in there. There's lots of different things you can do to plump it up, but even just canthoplasty, doing like an almond eye surgery could be the most optimal way of doing this long term, simply by kind of bringing up the skin. Reducing the gumminess of a smile, it's worth noting that we're gonna have to do some other things that conflict with that, and it's lip lift surgery. See, the thing about a lip lift is it might create more gumminess of the smile because we're bringing up that upper lip. So what you want to do in this case is a multifaceted approach of lip lifting, but also lip flipping. There's many different ways of doing this. Add some injections like dermal fillers in so that you're doing one thing and then the opposite thing simultaneously to reduce gumminess and shorten his philtrum. It's worth noting it probably will be quite complicated in his case to achieve exactly the look he wants. An eyebrow hair transplant for those wide set eyebrows would just be a go-to automatic win. Just getting it into those regions, birthmark reduction. This can be done through laser treatment and many other ways, but we can lighten it up. And if all else fails, you can always use cover up to make it look a lot less noticeable. And then finally, improve his lip filtrum angle contour. So achieving a more concave appearance from this side here, like bringing that out could be achieved through the lip lift surgery. And then furthermore, injections like dermal fillers would help as well. Basically, there's a lot we can do there. So time to chatify face number two. Let's get into it and just see how you'd look like if he does all this. Boom. Just an incredible appearance change. Like sure, as we zoom in, we're going to see that his wide set eyes, they stay. Even with that large flaw occurring and just being there, there's no doubt that face number two can get much more attractive. You can pull off a severe flaw in many cases as long as you tackle the other areas. And that beard just looks fantastic on him. Then we get the side profile here. You can see how all those implementations from the side view are taking effect. All right, guys. So face number three, your final face today, 31 years old, 175 pounds at five foot nine. Here's his photos. So face number three is a moderate match to the B phenotype. This is a Georgian cock phenotype. You can really see the resemblance here. And he's also a good example of the East European phenotype of Europe. So he's got that blended Eastern European appearance. Boom. So there's both of his phenotypes across. 
Best features in order of importance. Face number two, let's get into it. First of all, he's bright gray blue eyes. This is quite a standout feature in his case. I think it looks quite good. Secondly, his thick luscious hair, really evident in all the photos. And he has excellent forward growth, maxillary development, really good under his eye. He's got a decent brow ridge protrusion. So let's like look at his mental labial angle using my software to really pinpoint this. So his mental labial angle is 129.6 degrees. Honestly, like sometimes 135 to even 140 looks good. The chin projection really works in his case. And it really creates like a positive vector for his mandible growth forward in relation to his nasion. So he's also short eye eyebrow distance, which is quite good. And he's excellent skin quality. Honestly, face number three is a pretty good looking guy. A lot of the features he kind of scored in the upper end of average. So facial flaws, let's dive into it. So he's a long filtrum of 1.55 to one. It looks like every single face today was not in the optimal area for filtrum length. Basically meaning most people had a longer filtrum than ideal. He has wide set eyes as well with an ES ratio of 0.51. This is one of the reasons why this guy is not a Chad whatsoever. Two major flaws, they hit him hard. The long filtrum is like a big mark against him. And then the wide set eyes is also a big mark despite having quite good features. And thirdly, he does have a slight deviation of a septum, but this isn't major or anything. And he has a slightly thin upper lip. It's 33% of the total height here, whereas the bottom is 66%. Ideally, you would want it 40-60 split or even a 50. 50. And he has a low nasal facial angle. This means that his nasal projection in relation, remember that in relation to his Pagonian Tunisian plane here is quite low. This should be more like 30, maybe 33, 36 in some cases, given these phenotypes, maybe even higher because of the B phenotype, which is almost Middle Eastern. It unfortunately places him in a weaker zone here, which is not optimal. And that's it. Guess face number three's rating, everyone. Boom, six out of 10 peaking from the blend perspective, meaning he's neither more pretty nor more masculine. All right, so there's two main areas for face number three to tackle with looks maxi. I mean, there's obviously more things that I included in his report, but we're just gonna go over a simplified version in this video. And the first thing being his lips. His upper lip being small kind of hits a lot of areas in a negative way. First of all, it makes his filtrum look longer than ideal. In this case, because he's looking up, it almost looks like it's not as bad, but you can tell that even from the side profile, his lip is simply too long. And it's because his upper lip is not occupying enough distance. Distance. Like if we could get this way higher, his chin filtrum ratio will look better. His upper lip will look better. Even his contour angle here, it almost looks flat. We could get that way out and it would just look simply better. And then his nose. Fixing that deviated septum is key. It can lead to sleep apnea in many cases. So it's actually a health consideration on top of aesthetic. Time to chat if I face number three. Let's get into it, guys. Boom. He has to embody those wide set eyes. We can't change wide set eyes very easily through many tactics other than perhaps thickening up the hair. And that's exactly why I also simulated some bonus chatification variants of longer hair. And my God, when it gets longer, he just looks better because you don't see how wide set his eyes are anymore. We're seeing how three totally different phenotypes have totally different strategies for fixing their facial flaws. And all three of them have extreme potential going forward despite different starting points. If you enjoyed the video, guys, please give it a like and comment as it helps the YouTube algorithm. Thank you very much, and I'll talk to you guys next time.